In this case, I am going to read the Archbishop's letter word for word with only some parts having been edited out due to length. Here is what the Advent message is of Archbishop Carlo Vigano. The tragic story of this failed pontificate advances with a pressing succession of twists and turns. Not a day passes from the most exalted throne of the Supreme Pontiff proceeds to dismantle the See of Peter, using and abusing its supreme authority, not to confess but to deny, not to confirm but to mislead, not to unite but to divide, not to build but to demolish. Material heresies, formal heresies, idolatry, superficiality of every kind, the Supreme Pontiff Bergoglio never ceases stubbornly to humiliate the highest authority of the Church. His action seeks to violate the sacred deposit of faith and to disfigure the Catholic face of the Bride of Christ by word and action, through duplicity and lies, through those theatrical gestures of his that flaunt spontaneity but are meticulously conceived and planned and through which he exalts himself in a continuous narcissistic self-celebration, while the figure of the Roman pontiff is humiliated and the sweet Christ on earth is obscured. On the occasion of the liturgical memorial of the Virgin of Guadalupe, Pope Bergoglio once again gave vent to his evident Marian intolerance, recalling that of the serpent in the account of the fall. In that proto-gospel, which prophesizes the radical enmity placed by God between the woman and the serpent, and the declared hostility of the latter, who until the consummation of time will seek to undermine the woman's heel and to triumph over her and her posterity. The pontiff's intolerance is a manifest aggression against the prerogatives and sublime attributes that make the immaculate ever virgin mother of God, the feminine complement to the mystery of the incarnate word, intimately associated with him in the economy of redemption. After having downgraded her to the neighbor next door or a runaway migrant with a couple of jokes, he struck at the heart of the Marian dogma and the Christological dogma connected to it. The Marian dogmas are the seal placed on the Catholic truths of our faith. They are the unbreakable bulwark against Christological heresies, and against the furious unleashing of the gates of hell. To attack Mary is to venture against Christ himself. To attack the mother is to rise up against her son and to rebel against the very mystery of the Most Holy Trinity. The Immaculate Theotokos will do battle to save the Church and destroy the enemy's unfettered army that has declared war on her and with him all the demonic Pachamamas will definitively return to hell. Pope Bergoglio no longer seems to contain his impatience with the Immaculate, nor can he conceal it under that seeming and ostentatious devotion which is always in the spotlight of the cameras, while deserts the solemn celebration of the Assumption and the recitation of the Rosary with the faithful. Papa Bergoglio uses the Pachamama to rout the Guadalupe Lady, the enthronement of that Amazonian idol, even at the altar of confession of St. Peter's Basilica, was nothing less than a declaration of war on the lady and patroness of all the Americas, who with their apparition to Juan Diego destroyed the demonic idols and won the indigenous peoples for Christ and the adoration of the most true and only God through her maternal mediation. And this is not a legend. A few weeks after the conclusion of the Cinderella event, which marked the investiture of Pachamama in the heart of Catholicity, we learned that the conciliar disaster of the Novus Ordo Mise is undergoing further modernization, including the introduction of the word do in the Eucharistic canon instead of the mention of the Holy Spirit the third person of the Most Holy Trinity. This is a further step in the direction of regression towards the naturalization and immanentization of Catholic worship, towards a pantheistic and idolatrous novissimus ordo. 
But let us return for a moment to the idolatrous statues of rare ugliness and to Pope Bergoglio's declaration the day after their removal from the church in Traspontina and their drowning in the Tiber. Once again, the Pope's words have the scent of a colossal lie. He made us believe that the statuettes were promptly exhumed from the filthy waters thanks to the intervention of the Italian police. We are tempted to pose the question to the person who made that statement. Certainly this time too, he would answer us with his eloquent silence. For more than six years now, we have been poisoned by a false magisterium, a sort of extreme synthesis of all the conciliar misconceptions and post-conciliar errors that have been relentlessly propagated without most of us noticing. Yes, because the Second Vatican Council opened Pandora's box, and so gradually that we did not realize the upheavals that had been carried out, the real nature of the reforms and their dramatic consequences, nor did we suspect who was really at the helm of that gigantic subversive operation which the modernist Cardinal Suens called the 1789 of the Catholic Church, the French Revolution. Thus, over these last decades, the mystical body has been slowly drained of its lifeblood through unstoppable bleeding. The sacred deposit of faith has gradually been squandered, dogmas denatured, worship secularized and gradually profaned, mortality sabotaged, the priesthood vilified, the Eucharistic sacrifice Protestantized and transformed into a convivial banquet. Now the church is lifeless covered with metastasis and devastated. The people of God are groping, illiterate, robbed of their faith, in the darkness and chaos of division. In these last decades, the enemies of God have progressively made scorched earth of 2,000 years of tradition. With unprecedented acceleration, thanks to the subversive drive of this pontificate, supported by the powerful Jesuit apparatus, a deadly coup de grace death blow is being delivered to the church. With Pope Bergoglio, as with all modernists, it is impossible to see clarity, since the distinctive mark of the modernist heresy is dissimulation. Masters of errors and experts in the art of deception, they strive to make what is ambiguous universally accepted, presenting it from its harmless side, which will serve as a passport to introduce the toxic side that was initially kept hidden. And so the lie, obstinately and obsessively repeated, ends up becoming true and accepted by the majority. Also typically modernist is the tactic of affirming what you want to destroy, using vague and imprecise terms, and promoting error without ever formulating it clearly. This is exactly what Pope Bergoglio does. With his dissolving amorphism of the mysteries of the faith, with his doctrinal approximation through which he waters down and demolishes the most sacred dogmas, as he did with the Marian dogmas of the ever-Virgin Mother of God. The result of this abuse is what we now have before our eyes, a Catholic Church that is no longer Catholic, a container emptied of its authentic content and filled with borrowed goods. The advent of the Antichrist is inevitable. It is part of the epilogue of the history of salvation. We know that it is the prerequisite for the universal triumph of Christ and his glorious bride. Those of us who have not let ourselves be deceived by these enemies of the church who are within the ecclesial body must unite and together face off against the evil one who is long defeated yet still able to harm and cause the eternal perdition of multitudes of souls, but whose head the Blessed Virgin, our leader, will definitively crush. Now it is our turn. Without equivocation, without letting ourselves be driven out of this church, whose legitimate children we are, and in which we have the sacred right to feel at home, without the hateful horde of Christ's enemies making us feel marginalized, schismatic, and excommunicated. Now it is our turn. The triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, co-redemptrix and mediatrix of all graces, passes through her little ones, who are certainly frail and sinners, but are absolutely opposed to the members enlisted in the enemy's army. 
little ones, consecrated without any limit whatsoever to the Immaculate, in order to be her heel, the most humiliated and despised part, the most hated by hell, but which together with her will crush the head of the infernal monster. The church is shrouded in the darkness of modernism, but the victory belongs to our Lord and his bride. We desire to continue to profess the perennial faith of the church in the face of the roaring evil that besieges her. We desire to keep vigil with her and with Jesus in this new Gethsemane of the end times, to pray and do penance and reparation for the many offenses caused to them. Signed, Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.